friends forever, that's what we are. Through the thick and the thin, we're friendship stars. We're banger main buddies from the days of old. We laugh, cry, and hug, friendship solid as gold. My soul could whatever started a year ago. We share our stories, and your stories were told. 80s, 90s, memories that give us glee. And on the block, party shows, and KOTB. Now our friendship circle has grown by far. Hashtag friends forever, that's what we all are. Boom. And if you don't know, now you know. My soul called whatever for life. Hashtag MSCW. Hashtag friends forever. Yeah. Uh, 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 uh. Yeah. Party dang, like it's dang, 1969. Dang. Not 69, 69, but 89. Not 99. 2009. 2000, zero, zero. Party over. Oops. Out of time. Oh, R.I.P. Oh, it's so sad. It is. So, hey guys. Hey guys. Hey. So I've been watching the Great British Baking Show. Oh, that's a good or show. Bake Off Baking Show. I think I, it depends I on where you that. are. I watched that with Bren on so, Netflix. I thought I know of other people that watch it mm-hmm. that it kind of enjoy it as a family. Like their kids like it yeah. and they like it. So we were eating dinner. I don't know. It was last night or the night before. And Sadie's always like, let's watch something that we all can watch. Oh. Because Pete likes to watch Star Wars and, like, just stuff that, like, we don't like. Right. And I watch, like, like, This Is Us and things that, like, nobody else likes in my house. Right. Right. So, and she likes to watch, like, cartoons. Fine. Same. But there are some things that we all agree on, like The Masked Singer. Okay. And America's Got Talent. Okay. Those sorts of shows. Yeah. So I was like, well, let's find something. So I put that on and I thought, well, I'll like it. Well, that was a big fat no. They didn't like it. <laughs> but you did. But I did. Isn't but it? who's it's that so, guy? It's so relaxing. Who's that guy that when they're like, on your marks, and he was like, and he's like, got rudder. Like he says some. he says it weird. I don't know. But I love him. Yeah. He's kind of like sassafras. He is sassy. Like he's sassy. But he's like, I don't, I don't even know how he does it. It's like a peewee voice, but he sings it, and I love it. So anyway, it's a great show. That it is really my is. life right now. Yeah. I'm trying to think of what I've been watching. Unsolved Mysteries. So that is nothing new. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely not. Mickey, it is the year 1989. What are you watching? Unsolved Mysteries. Unsolved Mysteries. <laughs> Nikki, it is the year 1996. What are you watching? Uh, Unsolved Mysteries. Yep. Yep. Nikki, it's 2004. What are you watching? Unsolved Mysteries on Lifetime. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Unsolved Mysteries TiVoed. Yeah. Boop, 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 boop. <laughs> yes. So um, I started listening to a new podcast. Oh, you did? Oh, I love new podcasts. <sighs> tell me, tell me, tell me. So I, it was kind of on accident. I wasn't looking for a new podcast. Okay. okay. By any means, because I can't, I have a hard time keeping up with the ones that I have. Um. But I'm looking it up because I don't remember the name. I just started today. Oh, so it's called Radio Rental. Okay. It's from Tenderfoot TV and Payne okay. Lindsay. Okay. Well, okay. Well, wait, wait, wait. Hold on. Is Payne Lindsay in it? No. Okay. But he he talks the Because you know how I feel about. Yes. So pa- the only time Payne Lindsay is really on is when he's like, hey, guys, do you, do you ever come home and not know what's for dinner? Oh. Well, Hello Fresh. Like oh, okay. he'll do that part. And I just I <clears throat> I, I skip through those. Ugh. But no offense to those of you who are Payne Lindsay fans. No, and I really, really, really loved that first one. I did too, but like he made me mad. Right. Yes. You were a little offended at one at Yeah. And I totally get it. Right. I get it. But what I like about it is it's true. Like terrifying stories told by the people that lived them. Oh my god, really? So it's a really neat kind of. It's hosted by like some famous radio host who's kind of like spooky-ish. Oh, I don't know who he is, but it's really entertaining. I and love episode it. Episode one. This I, I'm like I no spoiler. I'm mm-hmm. not going to spoil it. But episode one, you'll know the story. Like you'll know it, and as. It starts, you're going to be like, at one point, you're going to be like, oh, my gosh. Yes, I remember when that happened. Was it on Unsolved Mysteries? No. This was like a huge national news okay. like headline okay. thing. But like this, this guy who was a teenager at the time was there. Oh, wow. So it's like from his perspective. It's really, really And neat. what's it called again? It's 
called Radio Rental. Okay. I'm totally listening to that tomorrow. It's very cool. So do you want me to tell you what I've been listening to? Yes. I would love to hear. Okay. So it's a little late because it came out like back in August. Oh, okay. But it's called Spooked. And it oh. is freaking scary. And it's season three because I've I've listened to it every year. It is crazy scary and it's told the stories are told by the people who it happened to so it's oh, like okay. so some like similar yeah. in idea yeah exactly but is it like paranormal it is or? it is see that is might be the difference here yes because these ones are not paranormal well i but i i like that too you know they're cool yeah it's here's the thing about that i like about ghost stories i don't want to hear the possession things the stories i don't want to hear i want to hear the little old lady who likes to clean up your bathroom. Right. That's yes. a ghost. Yes. yes. I want to hear those stories. Like the old man farmer that used to live on the property next door. Right. That still, you can still hear chickens in the morning. Ex- because yes, exactly. he goes out there and feeds them. Exactly. Yeah. Text messages from your loved ones. Want to hear about that. Phone calls from your loved ones. Oh my gosh. I want to hear about that. Because it happens. Like, that gives people, me chills. People say that. Is that like what they do on Spooked? Do they talk no, about that sort of they, thing? I think one of them was something about a phone call. Yeah. Or a text message. Um, it may have been another podcast that I was listening to. But um, there are some scary ones on there. Like some of the like demonic ones, which I don't like. Yeah. Those, I don't, well, those freak me out. I don't like them. They freak me out. Like, I'm okay. But um, and like, that's what sucks is like on Amazon. I'm not Amazon, Netflix. There's yeah. a whole new series called Haunted. Yeah. and it, But it's all like demonic possession. I don't want to hear that. I want to oh. hear, again, you know. You want to hear about Mr. the ghost cat. Mr. Um, so-and-so who likes to visit the kids and make sure that everything's okay because he's their protector. Yeah. You know, I want to yep. hear those stories. Yep. Because I know they're out there. Yep. Maybe that's another podcast. Maybe. Maybe that's another podcast idea right there. Hey. Who would listen to that? Do, 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 Only do, problem do. is, where do we get these stories? I don't know. <laughs> but um, another podcast that I have been into that um, <clears throat> they're, I think, part of the Lady Pod Squad oh. is um, Resolve Mysteries. And I think I've talked about it oh, before. They are Lady. Yes, I've seen them, them in the Facebook group. And I am way behind. Like, I am way behind. But I do love this because... It's like when they tell the story, when they go over the episodes, I'm like, I know I can picture it in my head. I know exactly what they're talking about. And then I like to go watch it. (laughs) (laughs) So they got me back on the Unsolved Mysteries kick. Yeah. So I started. So I think I started with season three and now I'm on season 10. Oh, wow. So I'm sad that it's almost over. You're living through it, though. Yeah. I just love Unsolved Mysteries. Wow. But um, I don't love Unsolved Mysteries, like mysteries that are unsolved. But I love the show Unsolved Mysteries. And I love that this stuff is up to date. Like, yeah, the like updates. It's like, holy cow, that that happened last year. That's cool. That's really cool. Yeah. Like they I think I I talked about this before. They had the the guy there, the Golden State Killer. That they caught him. Yep. Yep. So you did talk about that. That's pretty cool. That is cool. I'm reading my phone, aren't I? Yeah. I put it down. I was like, okay, I'm done. So we should probably intro. Yeah, let's do it. This is Brooke. And this is Nikki. And this is my so-called whatever. Yep, it is. Welcome to the block party. We ain't leaving out nobody at all. Nope. We're not leaving out anybody. Not you or anybody else. Nobody. ASMR. So... (laughs) <laughs> so welcome guys welcome to the block party this is our new kids on the block block party week yes we last, are happy to have you last week we had a 80s 90s episode mostly 90s right and yes as we will have next week yep possibly Who sometimes knows? we switch it up and we go block party block party sometimes we do because we're wild and crazy like that yep you just you never know with us you just never know sometimes, you never know what you're gonna get we're a mixed bag we that, that's right it's kind of like we're kind of like the the bag of of like uh, like Halloween candy that you get, but the one but but it's the one with like Kit Kats. We are definitely the Kit Kat bag. Yeah. Or, or I mean, depending on who you are, 
Or were the Snickers bag? I was going to say the bottle. I don't like Snickers. Okay. Do you- I, we My whole house loves Snickers. Okay, you go upstairs and you take all the Snickers. Because we bought, we had like the Snickers bags. Actually, we do, we do not. Them. Snickers are trash. Are you serious? I do not like Snickers so at all. Ours Sorry, had Snickers. The crispy Snickers, the peanut butter Snickers, the original Snickers, Blech. and the almond Snickers, which are like, my favorite. But I don't like peanuts. So that would make sense. I like peanut like butter, Snickers. but I don't like peanuts. Have you tried the peanut butter Snickers? Nope. Because that I think you'd like. Does it have crunchy nuts in it? No. Crunchy nuts. It's. <laughs> <laughs> Brooke is done. <laughs> i'm done no it's like smooth oh with caramel. well then i would like that i think you would like the peanut butter snickers Ooh. caramel yeah or caramel and peanut butter mm-hmm. that's an interesting combination that i don't think i've ever had wait I yes i have like i've had peanut butter twix yes and i do like them it's going and to I, be similar. And I'm sorry that, for those Snickers fans. Snickers isn't trash. I take it. I retract that statement. I love it. I just don't like them, and nobody in my family likes them. And That's we always get tons of Snickers. Actually, I think they threw them out. <laughs> what? But next time, because I can, I can clearly remember Brody saying, "Well, what am I supposed to do with all these?" I'm like, "Well, don't leave them somewhere because the dog will get into them." Right. We don't. And want I was that. like, "Just throw them out." Well, next time. Next time we're going to make a little bag for Brooke save them and her for the family. Save the Christopher household. And we will take. And you can save bottle caps for me. Perfect. Because those are trash. Oh, my God. I love bottle caps <laughs> so much. Just bottle caps. So I don't like. I don't like Smarties. I don't like. Ugh. I don't like Smarties. But I like bottle caps. And I think it's because I like the root beer ones. I've never. I've honestly never had them. I but I know I don't like but them. I don't think I like the other flavor. Well, there's like a Sprite, like a lemony lime. I'm getting like like mm, that I'm, sounds pretty good. I'm salivating. Um, yeah. So, huh. Well, that was our Halloween candy. Yes. Moment. Tangent. Tangents galore here All at day. my so-called whatever. All day. You you've come you've come to the right place if you want a tangent. That's right. I'm going to smell this. Oh, that. Okay. So that candle is from one of our listeners. Yes. And it smells delightful. They're from Napa Uncorked. I believe that that is the name. Yeah, it is. It is Napa Uncorked. Napa Uncorked Candles dot com. Yes. Um, This is Cabernet. And they sent us a bunch of candles. You guys listen to me when I tell you that these candles, you light them. Your room smells like those candles like three days afterwards. They smell so just, freaking good. Like it smells so good. And that one has a, we should go ahead and light it. Go ahead. I can't stop sniffing. Do you have a lighter? Yeah. Over there I have a butane. Ooh. Kevin was like, we're not going to mess around. I'm going to oh, get a butane lighter. Oh, hey. So we're going to tell stories of by candlelight tonight. It's lit. There we go. Oh my gosh. Let me get a little whiffity whiff. It yeah. Smells Napa so uncorked. Good. Thank you for the candles. Thanks. They sent us a Remember Betty one. They sent us um, my so-called whatever logo one. And then they sent one of Brooke and I in the picture. Yeah. The little animation. Not animation. Um, illustration. The illustration. So that's the one I have lit. And I believe that they take old wine bottles. I think this is an old wine bottle. Yeah. That would make sense. And it yeah. looks like it too. So who wants to read first? I'll go ahead and read first. Then go for it. I'm going to read Amy's story. Here we go. Okay, so in this next story, if thoughts of suicide or domestic abuse as a trigger for you, please continue on to the next episode. I will come on again and let you know what minute and second you should fast forward to. Perfect. Okay. Yeah. Proceed to around the 23.50 to 24 minute mark. This isn't a fan story. It's a story of how new kids helped me get through a rough time. One which ultimately gave me great growth and strength I never knew I had. It's not pretty. I listened to your podcast regarding dealing with depression and I, as probably many, can relate. The worst thing you can do is isolate yourself. I learned this the hard way. The best thing is surrounding yourself with people who love you. I am sure both of you know how blessed you are to share such a strong and loving friendship that is priceless. 
It is priceless. I love you, Brooke. I love you, Nikki. I wrote this story out as if I were writing it to the new kids directly. I'm not sure it's podcast appropriate or worthy, but it feels good to get it out of my head and into text. It feels healthy. This is my story. Like I said, it's not pretty, but in the end, there is redemption. But most importantly, after being in such a dark place with zero hope, it's a lesson in knowing without a doubt that things do get better and there will be happiness again. Sometimes you just have to take it day by day, sometimes hour by hour, but it gets better. It always gets better. Hi, (laughs) NKOTB. I wanted to write to you to tell you about the happiness you brought to me over many, many years and in a very dark time in my life. I was a BH from the very beginning. It wasn't cool for me to be one at the time. I was a bit older than your other fans, 15 in 1988. My friends were into skater music or metal or whatever, but I flew my BH flag proudly anyways. The teen years were not always easy for me, but your music, concerts, posters always made me smile. I'm going to fast forward to 2008. I was 35, newly married, new baby girl, new home. I just left my established career to be a stay-at-home mom. I was able to go to your concert that year you got back together, and I was over the moon. Every year since 1990, or 91, I always made the family listen to Merry Merry Christmas when we decorated the tree. Every single year. That was not always popular with everyone, but I loved the tradition and carried it on faithfully my whole life. Life was good in 2008, or so I thought. I ended up starting a successful little business from home and even a DIY YouTube channel that was randomly really popular. That's really cool. That is really cool. We had a beautiful home, a beautiful daughter, and I thought we had a perfect life. I was very focused on being the best mom and wife I could be. Then my world came crashing down. In 2015, I found out my husband had been cheating on me with multiple women. This had been going on the entire time and I had no idea. I can't explain the trauma. I spent a week curled up in a corner, literally. Eventually, after five months of pure torture and trying to figure out, do I stay or do I go? What's the best for my family? I ended up leaving my marriage with only what I could fit in my car. I walked away from everything, the business, the YouTube, everything. I was pretty much homeless and jobless. I finally found a job that was way below my skill level and certainly did not pay enough to live on. Even so, for the first time in my life, I was fired. I was constantly in a fog. I was having night terrors. My hands were always shaking. Imagine being in an intense fight or flight mode, but not just for 10 minutes and then it's over, but constantly 24 hours a day for at least a year. That was me. I was wrecked emotionally, physically it took a toll, and mentally. What made it much worse was even after I left him, he played so many head games with me. He had a new, serious girlfriend within two weeks of me leaving, but then he would come to me and tell me that he loved me and missed me. That he made a huge mistake and he'd spend his life making it up to me. That our daughter needed us to be a family. That he needed me. I'd agree to try again and then he dumped me the next day to go back to his girlfriend. This happened three times. I'm ashamed to admit it, but yes, three times. I ended up with PTSD and was suicidal. I was a nightmare. I was a mess. I had my kiddo and I had to keep going, but I certainly wasn't living. I was in survival mode and barely managing that. The next Christmas, I, as I always did, played Merry Merry Christmas while we decorated the tree. At the time, I was living on my mom's couch and I was still a total mess. But for the first time in many months, I forgot about the drama and trauma for an hour and just enjoyed this holiday tradition I started when the album came out many years prior. After that, I started slowly pulling myself together. First, I had to pull myself together mentally and emotionally. I started reading Eckhart Tolle and journaling and just dealing with my pain. Therapy helped too. At the time, I had started working at a pretty crappy job selling cruises on the phone. Oh, how I wanted to go on a new kid's cruise, but I needed to deal with my life. I worked on healing and forgiveness for myself, my self-esteem, which was shot to shit and being present. I worked my ass off to make money. From time to time, my ex would try to come back in and cause me more trauma, but I was getting stronger. As a side note, my ex was diagnosed with a malignant narcissist personality disorder. Did I say that? Malignant narcissistic personality disorder. People throw the term narcissist around a lot, but I will tell you when you are in a relationship with one, the mental and emotional abuse is so gradual, insidious, you don't even know what's happening until it's much too late. It's also really crazy making. 
Anyways, I was able to afford to move out of my mom's after a few months and rent a camper. Yes, a camper. I went from being married and living in a beautiful home on the intercoastal, on the intercoastal? Is that like a place? In Palm Beach? I'm guessing Oh, yes. Yeah. I could see Mar- Mar-Lago? Mar-Lago? Mar- Mar-Lago. 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 From my front yard. To living in a camper. But my daughter was healthy and happy. And I was starting to become healthy and happy. And we made an adventure of it. It was actually kind of fun. After five months, I had saved enough to rent a mobile home. I was able to finalize my divorce and even get back into the career I had before I met my ex-husband as the membership director at a private golf club. Since then, I've been killing it at work. I feel strong and my daughter is doing pretty great too. I even bought my own mobile home. I mean, it's a mobile home, but it's cute. And hey, it's all mine. And I did it all by myself. That's right. Hey, that's what I'm talking about. I am proud of how far I've come in these three and a half years since that day my life changed. It's been a long process. Now I see it change for the better and I'm still going, improving, getting my groove back. Not dating yet, but maybe someday I'll put myself back out there. Good for you. Absolutely. Heal yourself. Yep. The thing that really helped me through all of that was the music I played when I was feeling a lot of pain. I realized that listening to Adele when I was in the middle of that pain was not helping me feel help- happy. Adele is great for wallowing in a broken heart. I love her, but I couldn't stand the pain anymore. So I would put on new kids and genuinely smile, which is a miracle, really, considering the state I was in. The music never failed to make me smile. It's probably been my saving grace. That is no exaggeration. I'm getting tears just typing this. In July, I will take my daughter to her first ever concert. Oh, she took her. And it will be NKOTB in Fort Lauderdale. I have loved sharing my love of the band with her. We have dance parties together and we have the best time dancing around the living room. She likes to get her fake money that came. (laughs) She likes to get her fake money that came with a magic kit she has and make it rain. (laughs) That is the cutest thing. I just wanted to share with you how you have touched my life and I've really been there. So this is like this part is she's actually talking to new kids on the block. Not us. No. I wanted to share with you how you have touched my life and have really been there for me through all the ups and downs life brings. You even played a big part in saving me or in making saving myself a bit easier at the very least. I love your genuine personalities as much as I did when I was 15. Actually, even more now because I can appreciate the love you show your fans, the empathy you demonstrate and the joy and friendship you all share together. It warms my soul in a real and profound way, which sounds weird, but it's just the truth. Thank you, new kids. I'll be loving you forever. And I'm eternally grateful. And thank you to Brooke and Nikki. I feel like you two are my soul sisters. And it's so comforting to listen to you and know you get it. Blockheads are my peeps for reals. Others may not understand us, but it doesn't matter. We understand us. I do have Joey stories from 99 that include his dressing room the leather pants, his tour bus and more all very G rated. I'm sad to say (laughs) I will share them soon. Love for you both. Your new fan, Amy. Thanks, Amy. Thank you, Amy. Amy, thank you so much. Yes. Thank you for sharing. I know that was probably very hard for you to share. Uh, Totally. And I really appreciate you. You know, you're very brave. You're very brave in sharing that story. Very brave. Yes. And we appreciate it. And I'm proud of you. Me too. Me too. So I am going to read Angelica's okay mixtape tour story. Sounds like a plan, Stan. The stand-in. The stand-in. I didn't really grow up as a New Kids fan, but I fell in love with them when I caught a show on the last tour. Hey, a new New Kids fan. Hey, hey, hey. Once the mixtape tour started, I had been avoiding all updates like the plague because I had wanted to be surprised to recapture the magic sparked when I saw them in 2017. I can recall this. When when we like somebody went live, like right before the the tour started, I feel like she was one of the ones that commented. Sorry, guys, I'll see you when the tour is over. Oh, I'll be back. Right. She didn't. She, didn't she was like me for the last tour. She didn't want. Spoilers. Right. She didn't want spoilers. Was that making you nervous? Like it was going to catch it on is. fire? Is I get I get my mom. It's my mom. Irrational fear of fire. Well, I mean. It's rational, kind of. It kind of is. It smells so good. It smells wonderful. Um, Somehow, I found out that the ticket... 
not the Ticketmaster. <laughs> she didn't write that. I just put it in it's there. It's like the Walmart. Right. The Target. Somehow I find I found out that Ticketmaster allows you to exchange your tickets for other seats of equal or higher value. Plus the difference in exchange fee. Hey. Miraculously, I found tickets that were closer to the floor. What on earth? The day before my flight to Charlotte from Fort Lauderdale, I had the most random idea to make a sign for John, who I just find so fascinating. Normally, I'm not a sign person, but I came up with an idea on a whim. When the concert rolled around, my girlfriends and I walked over to the show and I could hardly contain my excitement. Normally, I'm pretty chill. But Mama was out of town on a girls' night to see her favorite guy. Hey, hey, hey! The Farmhouse Fixer preview came on and I almost lost my marbles. Then finally, the show began. I knew the guys would be in the crowd and I knew Block Party would be crazy. The lights went off and I saw Donnie to my left. I was in awe. We're all Donnie girls, of course. Oh, yeah. When I turned my head straight, there he was in all his glory. Jonathan Knight Rodriguez, just six rows ahead, right in front of me. I froze. I was in pure awe. I realized I had my sign and I screamed my head off. All of a sudden, I turned into a teenager. He caught a glimpse of my sign, pointed and smiled. Success. The show continued and it was amazing. Donnie and Joey were just so close in the crowd, but a little too far from us. At one point, I saw Marcelo, the tour photographer, and I had told him how much I loved his work. A few minutes later, he walked up to me and asked to take a picture of my sign. I wondered if I'd ever end up seeing the picture since so much ends up on the cutting room floor. After the concert ended, my friends and I made it back to the hotel. As I was about to head into the shower, I saw that John had posted a picture. I'm getting goosebumps. As Ah! I looked closely, I was I stood there in utter disbelief. There I was on John's Instagram (laughs) post. My sign read Harley stand in and I had a little cut out of Harley's head on a popsicle stick. I didn't get a selfie. I didn't get a hug, but I got an Instagram post. I had the time of my life and I just can't wait until next tour. And can I tell you how gorgeous does she look? Amazing. Gorgeous. Like that is a gorgeous picture of you. Just I'm just saying she looks like full of life. Yes. Like I was going to say she looks like like a uh, like a uh, like like they like they posed her that way. Yes. Like yes. we need like we need new kid fan in crowd with sign. Right. Exactly. Yes. And they casted her and that's what they got. Right. Exactly. And I love it. It's perfect. Her smile is infectious. And let me read John Knight's post here. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, let me see if I can read it here. His post reads My babe, Harley Rodriguez, wasn't here in Charlotte. Luckily, he had a stand in. Been such an amazing run this spring and summer. Can't believe we only have five shows left. I love John. He's he is seriously he's a special person. I was you took the words right out of my mouth. He is a shining star like he is a he's just special. He really is. And And, oh, my gosh, he's so handsome. He is so handsome. (laughs) He is like he is like just so handsome. I mean, Everything about him is just like, oh my goodness, and you are just a, ha- you are just a, like, the model, like, of the male species. Like, handsome man. Look him up. Yes. That's, that's there he is. There's there he picture. is. John Knight. So, and I'm going to say, as he's gotten older, he yes. has, his looks have, been, like, he's grown into them or something. Like, but he was always very good looking. He was always but he, a handsome But as guy. he ages, he gets even more and more he handsome. Does. Well, and that happens to many men. I mean, that's... Oh, yeah. You know how... But then sometimes it doesn't. Yeah. Distinguished. And I will. I'll have... I have him now. And he is going to be a very in, handsome... In, in another 25 years. And that's the thing about Kevin. Seriously, I will say. He, as he gets older, he gets more and more handsome to me. That's like, that's the story with many men. I think. Unfortunately for me, it is the opposite. All right. Next so, story. Yes. Okay. This is Amy's first meet and greet. Boston baby. Yeah. Yeah. And we met Amy in Boston. We did. Yeah, we did. Ladies, ladies, ladies. First, let me start off by saying you two are hysterical. Hey. Oh, th- hey. Thanks. Thank you. Wow. I That, that was pretty good. That was. I didn't know we were hysterical. That's quite the uh, compliment there. I, I'm Amy. I'm, I'm flattered. I'm very flattered. Thank you. I'm fairly new to I'm 
I am a fairly new to you listener. However, I am totally loving what I hear and so happy I got the chance to meet you in Boston. It was like it was my second meet and greet. I was a bit more calm for you two, but I do remember screaming, I may, half a dozen times or so. And I was, I can remember her saying that. I was like, oh my gosh, you are A from the story. Oh, yes. She's A from, yes. yes, yes I remember yes, 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 that. Yes, yes, yes. She is <coughs> A from Alyssa's Alyssa's story. Yes. She's A. Amy. <laughs> so I have been a fan of the guys since Christ was a child, <laughs> which we know was a long time ago. I honestly that. OK, so that is a, I feel like that's a main saying or it could be. Has, I'm, I've never like, really heard it. You, I've heard it. I've heard older people use it. Like, I've known her since Christ was a child. I don't think I've ever really heard it that I can, like, recall. I've heard older people use it. Yeah. Maybe it is a main thing. Um, Which, okay. So, I honestly can't tell you the numerous shows that we, Alyssa and I, have been to. As she can, as she is submitting multiple stories of her own experiences over the years, which is amazing. Yep. Alyssa, where's your next story? We're I waiting. Know. We're waiting patiently or impatiently for it. Kind of in radio silence. For yes, me I need your story. Work on that, please. Yes, please. <laughs> but I will say this show in Boston absolutely is a standout show for me. I remember Alyssa saying they are coming back. We should do bar stools. Oh, I can't afford that. But then I'm like, screw it. Let's do it. <laughs> it did prove to be difficult. So we ended up with five stars, which to me was just as amazing. I drove to Massachusetts because she is from Maine. Yay. Hey, hey, neighbor. To spend the weekend at Alyssa's house. She had graciously opened up her home to me after plans fell through for a friend that was supposed to come with me, but then turned out to be very sick and still battling neurological issues. Oh, that's too bad. I hope your friend's feeling better. I arrive and thankfully my two weeks worth of major hot flashes had seemed to have subsided. Good thing because the humidity was setting in and was showing no signs of leaving for days. Great. Yeah, I, I felt that. I felt that. I did too. I felt that. (laughs) Show day is here. I'm quietly laying in bed and I get a text from Melissa, who is right downstairs. Happy Yankee OTB day. Shut the F up. Is this really happening today? After months and months of waiting, it is finally here. We finally get ready. We are finally, we finally start getting ready and all is going great. Spanks fit like a glove. (laughs) Makeup was going well and my hair was fantastic. This is going to be amazing. My hair and humidity don't play nice. I have an afro and tend to look, well, like I have a triangle on my head in that crap. Not to mention, I look like I am Dee Snyder from Twisted Sister. (laughs) We go outside to meet two of Alyssa's friends that are driving with us into the city. They were super nice and so glad I got to meet Linda and Crystal. We arrive and found our super cheap parking garage and walk to the venue. That was the dumbest move ever. Oh, I remember this. (sighs) It was like a wet freaking blanket wrapped around this fat Spanx wearing D. Snyder looking woman. No, Ugh. I was a mess. And no, it wasn't hot. Why? Oh, why didn't I listen when Alyssa said to call an Uber? I mean, legit, we were 0.4 miles away. But good Lord, we get to the restaurant. I'm taking off my shoes. Lemons are being rubbed on armpits and so on. I've never done. I've never heard of that. I haven't either. Lemons are being rubbed on armpits. For the fresh scent. Oh. Oh. Hey. We were all kind of a mess, but what? whatever. We are here, and damn it, I'm going to meet them after all this time. We connect with our entire group at our meeting spot. The air-conditioned CVS across the street from the garden. <laughs> I was tempted to buy a cheap curling iron and go into the bathroom and try to calm down my awful lion's mane. I was sporting. I was stressing and starting to panic. Danny can't see me like this. I have waited 30 years to meet him and I am a sweating mess. Fantastic. Just what I was hoping for. We arrive and are in the meet and greet area. We do our photos in the bedroom and in front of the neon sign, etc. I am in heaven and just soaking it all in. This is so crazy that it is happening to me right now. What the F? We are in line to finally see the guys. I am last as Danny is the first guy and I need Alyssa first to help lead the conversation. Last time I was in a meet and greet, I stepped on the artist's foot. Couldn't talk, sweating, and told them to enjoy the show. (laughs) (laughs) Amy, that was great. Oh, God. I vowed to do better this time. I had to. 
I started to get that feeling of almost sickness, scared, and I had no freaking clue what I'm going to say. Mind you, Alyssa's daughter had me practicing and telling me how I need to point out things I like about each of them. She is so freaking adorable, (laughs) my word. The woman standing behind me laughed at me, not in a mean way, but laughed and asked, is this your first time? Because by the look on your face, I would say yes. I wanted to vomit. OMG. Now I even look nervous. She proceeded to tell me to relax and that it all would be fine. (laughs) And now we are moving. Holy shit. I saw his arm, that tattooed covered muscle bulging arm, and I was calm as shit. Wow. Hey, I got this. (laughs) Really? Who the hell are you, Amy? Because two minutes ago, you were about to vomit, let alone ruin the shot you had been waiting for for the last 30 years. Hey, Danny. I'm Amy. So nice to meet you. I just effing said that. (laughs) (laughs) I didn't say that word without vomiting or gasping for air. And I was hugging him. Hot damn. I'm so amazing. Alyssa proceeds to talk and say how we are from Maine. He jokes and asks if our husbands are lobster men. I wanted to say, well, I'm engaged and we're getting married in November. And our first dance is we own tonight. Oh, but I couldn't for some reason. Alyssa is great and is all and is all no mine and is all no mine and explains Alyssa is great and explains and now he has zero interest in me I just smile like an asshole and keep looking at him (laughs) I will see he was the most relaxed out of all of them and although it ended up awkwardly with him I felt like he and I could be buddies and just hang out just like a super cool guy next was Donnie I will say he looked sad and exhausted that night I almost felt bad for him I hugged him and added in a joke after I said my name and said, wow, I can't remember the last time I paid this much money to hug a bunch of guys before. He giggled and I proceeded to tell him how happy I was to meet him and how I thought he was amazing. This was all while doing the whole hand slide down his arm and ending holding his hand. He then squeezed my hand and said, no, you are amazing. Oh, pee my pants. Pee my pants right there. Yep. Just just whiz right on the floor. (laughs) Pretty sure I could have went right home then and there had been <laughs> and then been c- content with the night. <laughs> now, let me tell you, when I would hear a woman say, I'm a so-and-so girl with this guy tendencies, I am all, no, you aren't. Decide who you want to love. <laughs> <laughs> I never understood this language. I love Danny and have since day one. He is my guy for sure. And now in my head, we hung out like BFFs. But Donnie, oh, Donnie, I certainly get the whole tendency thing now. Son of a biscuit. I think he has full on converted me at this point. (laughs) (laughs) And now the rest of the guys. Jordan was next. We hugged and he didn't speak or hardly look at me. It was mad best for me. I will say it was actually disappointing. Then Joe, Alyssa warned me not to look at him in the eyes, but I did. Wowza. She's explaining (laughs) as she just saw him on Broadway, etc. And I'm like, time is up for you. Ha ha. (laughs) I hugged him and said, oh, Joey, to which he replies, Amy, what? What? And I again said, so nice to meet you. I really had no idea what to say, but what a sweetie he is. Last but not least, John. I was so nervous all of a sudden. He was really quiet. Because he's so beautiful. He is. He was really quiet as well. And at this point, we were being kicked out because the next group was coming in. (laughs) I just got a quick hug. No mention of my name. And that was it. We were out. This is perhaps one of the best moments in my life. I never in a million years thought I would do that. And I do now. I can never see a concert of theirs any other way. A monster has been created. Congratulations to you ladies on your two years. A job well done. You have a new fan for life. And just remember, Augusta is just down the road from you. Again, I am so happy we got the chance to meet. Until next time. Bye. A. Oh, thanks, Amy. That was a great story. You're so sweet. Okay, I think this is the last story. Yeah. Yep. So I'm going to read Brooks NKOTB 2.0 story. Okay. So I read Brooks story the last time. Did you? Because you her did. name stands out. That's right. Because she's Brooke and I'm Brooke. Hi, That's Brooke. Right. Hey, Brooke. How's it There's going, There's not Brooke? like a ton of us. No, and I like the way she spells her name. B-R-O-O-K. It's different from mine. It is different from yours. I like the way you spell your name too. B-R-O-O-K-E. Thanks. Now, see, we I graduated or we graduated with two other Brooks and they were spelled the same they way as mine. They were spelled with an E. So I've we never, don't see very many I've Brooks. I've never with seen it spelled B-R-O-O-K. Um, I have seen it spelled that way many times because people misspelled my name. Oh, 
But wait, is that how you spell like a brook? Yes. Oh, like a babbling brook. Oh, well, I guess I have seen it then. (laughs) (laughs) So I'm going to read her story. Okay. (laughs) Hi, Nikki and Brooke. Hey. Last we talked, I had sent you my story from my experience at the Total Package Tour in 2017 with three friends from work. We had lower bowl seats, but vowed that next time we would be on bar stools. And we did it. Yay! Yay! Oh, exciting! Woohoo! When we heard tickets were going on sale for the mixtape tour, we began to make a plan. I joined the fan club to get early access. We were so excited to be able to score four bar stools. That's amazing. We were on the front of the stage in bar stools, bar stools five, six, seven, and eight in Memphis. And thus began the long wait until the concert. Ugh, that was a long wait. That was a long I recall. ass wait. Finally, the day arrived. We live in Arkansas, so we drove up early and got a hotel near the stadium for the night. I just read that as Arkansas. <laughs> <laughs> we nervously got ready while trying to imagine what was in store for us. I'll tell you my personal experience as I feel like it's different for everyone. We arrived at the stadium early before the doors opened. It was raining and our perfect hair and outfits were getting soaked. Oh. The nice people let us in to escape the rain. Seems like a um, going theme here. It really does. We were the second group to check in and were placed with the first group that coincidentally had six people and we quickly worked out who we were standing with. We were so lucky that it worked out perfectly. I'm a John girl, but also a Donnie girl because who isn't and have been since 1989. I could not believe that I was actually going to meet him. This is a dream I have had since I was six years old. Oh, my gosh. This is so cool. We were told that they were running late getting the stage set up. So as a result, the ultimates would be last. We were ushered into a room with drinks and food and took pics with all the awesome props. Oh, wait a second. She has an ultimate. Oh, wait, because she's she's a bar stool. Right. That's right. They named. That's right. That's right. That's right. They call them different this year. It was weird. It was a change of pace. It was a change of pace. While we were standing around waiting, I heard screams and cheers and looked up to see Donnie and Jordan racing through on bikes. Woo! My heart stopped and I couldn't believe that it just happened and it made me so much more excited for what was to come. I wonder if Donnie was on Joe's bike. Maybe. Hey. They finally called the Ultimates to line up and head to the stage. Since I was in the first group and was standing with John, I was second in line. When they walked out on the stage, it was like a dream. Mm. I couldn't wrap my head around it and I kind of froze up. I forced my legs to walk and saw Danny waiting. He was super nice and we hugged and said hi. Next was Donnie. OMG Donnie. He was right there in front of me. I couldn't believe it. Did you hear the... And then did Dreamweaver start playing in your head? Like it did the first time I met them. We hugged and I said, nice to meet you and started to walk off. I was scared of holding up the line and also making a fool of myself. He stopped me and looked right in my eyes and said... How are you? Oh, my gosh. And a million things ran through my head, such as, are you kidding? This is the best day of my life. And how am I? I'm terrific. I am meeting you. But instead, I said, fine. And kept walking. (laughs) Ha. Maybe next time. Jordan and Joe were next, and we hugged and exchanged pleasantries. And then I saw John. I felt my six-year-old self melt. I told him that I have loved him longer than I have loved anyone except my mom. He said, aw, and gave me a huge hug. After everyone was through the line, Donnie came down and talked with everyone for a minute. Wow. I have no idea what he said because I was so flustered. The concert was unbelievable. Our seats were unbelievable. My two guys, Donnie and John, were in front of us a lot. The only hiccup was spilling a large cup of ice water on my lap during the second song. But I just kept singing and dancing. That's what you do. That's what you do when your friend spills a beer on you. Yeah, that that is the truth. You just keep singing and dancing (laughs) and enjoying it. Yep. You take a picture first. Hold on. First, let's take a picture. And this is what Nikki did to me. It's taken me a while to sit down and write this because it's so hard to process one of your childhood dreams coming true. There are really no words and I still can't describe it adequately. I hope I'm lucky enough to experience it again. Thanks for taking the time to read this and for keeping the NKOTB love going strong with your podcast. Brooke. Oh, thank and you, Brooke. I love it. Oh, my gosh. Ugh. Your pictures are so good. They are so awesome barstool b5 wait what does her shirt say it ain't over till the i can't see what her shirt says let me see if i can zoom in on this one nope i don't know brooke what does your shirt say yeah let us know let us know so thank you so much brooke 
Yes. Thank we you. will look forward to more stories in the future. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So that's it. That's, that's all it, we have. Yeah. Wow. This was a this was a shorter podcast. But hey, you might like that. Was it? How long were we? Podcast episode. We're well, we're at like 54, but we took a couple breaks. So it's probably going to be like around 45. Eh, I think that's fine. I think that's we fine read too. our stories. Yeah. And we shared some information about podcasts that we've been listening to. Yes. So you guys send us your stories. My right. whatever at gmail.com. And thank you so much for everybody who has taken the time to yes. submit their experience for the my so-called whatever experience project. Nikki put the call out and you guys you came. Guys, we got more than three from each city. Like that's a lot. Because I just wanted one, like at least one representation or two representations from each city. Right. You know, just to be like, there they are. They're enjoying the concert. Right. Cool pictures. Um, but yeah. So. And it was even more. So yes. thanks, guys. Thank you so much. So that's all we got. And uh, that's all we have. And until next we time. We really want your your pictures, your stories. So. Totally. If you guys and have Christmas is coming, <gasps> we should do Christmas story. Well, holiday stories, holiday stories. Yes. yes. Send us your holiday or like stories. Winter theme stories. Yeah. Like, did whatever. you go sliding and like bowl into a bunch of people on Essex Street Hill? Tell us that story. Maybe you did. Because maybe that happened to me. Did you go sliding and run into a tree and what? end up with stitches? Did you? I did not. But maybe somebody maybe did. Maybe somebody did. Right. I took a person right the hell out. Mm. I took them right the hell out. They just friggin' went flying. It was like, sorry, you shouldn't have been walking up the hill while I was coming down on my sled. <laughs> Did your parents go take you to meet Santa Claus? And you have a picture of you crying in his lap? Yeah, we tell us pick all about pick. it. Pick a pick. We'll take a pick a pick. Yeah. So send them on over to our Gmail. Yeah. Or send, give us a call. 857-271-1047. We want your messages. Text or call. Yep. We'll so, talk to you later. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. Bye. Bye.